This is Greg Noyes of Pacific West Home Inspections. I'm doing a uh, home out in West Hills today. It's August 10th and uh, afternoon, sorry, at 2. It was uh, quite a warm day today, but now it's 5 in the afternoon and it's cooled down. It's a, one of those delightful valley uh, days out here. I want to go over and show you how to shut off the utilities. The first thing we're going to look at is the water, how to turn off the water. And that's in front of your house here. And you see a blue lever here. You can pull up in that 90 degrees and that shuts off your water. The uh, Also on it we have a pressure regulator and a pressure relief valve which we like to see. You notice it's a one inch copper line coming in from the street and into the house. So that's very good. Get plenty of flow of water. And uh, later on I'll do a pressure test make sure that this uh, device here is working. Also uh, in the front yard I noticed a four inch clean out and I recommended you get a, a sewer line inspection done and I think the guy's coming out here uh, tomorrow morning Monday and it probably has clay pipe and with a big tree here there might be some problems with it. Also in this part of the valley they have another type of sewer line it's called Orangeburg. If you have that it's uh, going to be a real problem so it needs to be replaced. So about 5% of the houses out here had Orangeburg. The uh, get in your gate here and on your right side of the house uh, you have a decomposed granite walkway. It's very nice and uh, you got a gas meter here and if you notice off the side there's a seismic gas shutoff valve they actually put it in the wrong uh, area it should have been put up here because it doesn't control all your gas lines so uh, the retrofit company will probably have a make mention of that here uh, the manually shut off the gas uh, on this valve here you turn it 90 degrees when the tank's perpendicular to the pipe, it's off, and you will need a rent for it. And uh, and guess what I found in the back here is your really nice gas shutoff wrench, and they have a little uh, axe on it so you can break into the house if it's uh, be up trap people. Uh, here also we have we find our tankless water heater. It's in Norris. And it's uh, 19, 2007, continuous hot water, 200,000 BTUs, and uh, it's quite a large one, or medium-sized one. And on the report, it's going to talk about upgrades, changing the rigid pipes out to a flexible pipe, and then also the uh, gas lines missing a sediment trap, and flexible gas lines, and then the relief pressure uh, relief valve is missing a drain line here and we want that to go down 6 to 20 inches off the ground. Uh, the AC unit is not leveled and it's not uh, anchored. Uh, I can actually move it around and so you want to anchor it down in case of an earthquake and then uh, the, uh, it's, if we look at the serial number, we find that it's a three and a half ton unit and it's uh, built in 2000. And then the insulation on your AC line is deteriorated. Uh, in the same area, we find our main panel, and this is a 200 amp uh, panel, main panel. These four breakers is a 200 amp service, and you just Flip it over this way, it shuts off all your power. They have a built-in uh, GFI uh, breaker, and that's for your kitchen. And um, around the side, you have another sub-panel, which we'll look at next. There's a uh, sub-panel in the rear of the house, rear exterior, it's made by a company called Zinsco, or excuse me, Federal Pacific. And it's an older type of panel, and when we see them, we recommend you remove the panel, put a new, newer type of panel in. So that's sub-panel number one. 
and we'll look at sub panel number two. We're in the area right behind the adjacent to the garage. It's a converted garage. It looks like a little office. But on the wall back here, you can see uh, uh, another panel, sub panel. So it's missing uh, labels and the inside wiring is done right. And so this is sub panel number two, and that's uh, in the office off of the uh, garage here. The third sub panel is at the pool equipment, which we'll look at that here in a second. This room here is built, let me see if we get the um, opener here open. Uh, where there's a garage here. And so this is supposed to be a firewall, one hour firewall. So you have a barrier, broken barrier here. You have a little doorway into here. Um, so it doesn't meet any requirements. It's not permitted. So um, on the report, it's going to say you have an unpermitted uh, room in the back of the garage and to get permits for this room. If you still plan to use it for an uh, office back here, when you turn on your air conditioner here, you're sucking in dirty air or air that may have gas fumes from the garage area. So you can see why we don't like to see, uh, that AC to be like that. If they suck the AC on the other wall, that would be bringing air out from the uh, clean air from the, from the environment, outside environment. So you could have easily done a better job here and they did not do that. Uh, next thing we're off to the third panel, sub panel, and that's over by the pool equipment area. So this is what we call California living. You got a nice newer pool. It's got a built and spa, waterfall in the back. And we're gonna go over to the pool equipment now. And uh, there's no pool fence around this pool. So we wanna make sure you get that in before you move in. And you got a, a pool heater here. And what we're interested in is the pool sub panel. And earlier today I took this cover off and it's wired properly. And you can see the labeling here is done right. This timer here runs the pool filter. And that's right at the end of its cycle. And then off the side here, uh, you have your uh, pool light system. And this is your GFI that protects the pool lights, pool spa lights. And today we found a leak at the bottom uh, pipe here connection and you want to get that fixed. Uh, it is a, uh, they have a uh, uh, ozone uh, uh, filter or a chlorinator device and a salt water uh, device and that should be serviced every three or four months. And one of the uh, pumps for the waterfall has been disconnected here. So that's not being used uh, presently. So our next item that we're going to look at is the roof. And I have my ladder all set up. So we'll climb the roof and get that done. And uh, so I get the ladder set up for the roof. And when you set the ladder up, you always want to do it on a gutter with a nail straddling the ladder straddling the nail. And uh, here it's a... Uh, a uh, cap sheet type roof, we call it uh, peel and stick. It's, and they didn't quite, they should put some tar around the edges here, but you can see it's loose. So they had to end up using uh, nails here so water can get down through the system. Not a good thing. You want to use some mastic Henry Steel forward to seal those. Now, if you look carefully, you'll see little uh, raised areas, in the, we call those air pockets. So when they lay out, laid out the uh, rolled out the roof, they didn't get all the air out, so it's not adhered uh, too well, and it won't last as long as it should. Typically, these should go uh, 12 to 15 years, and you won't probably won't get that. Uh, it is over a patio, so it's not the uh, over the house. Uh, the chimney is a brick chimney, and they do have a spark arrestor on it. And there's this minor cracking, small cracking uh, on the chimney cap. And then the very back of the, uh, bring it around here to see, uh, see any more cracks. The very back of the house, the uh, roof, 
where the roof comes down to the uh, back of the chimney, uh, they use tar to seal it. And what we like to see, and they actually have a small one, is a, we call it a cricket flashing where the water comes in and then flows around and they'll have a uh, piece of metal that diverts the water around the around the uh, um, the uh, chimney here and I'm just looking at they have a hole here so this there needs to be some repairs some work done in this area here so um, let's see water can get inside here uh, uh, it's a composition shingle and it's probably uh, six or so years old. The uh, ridge cap uh, is in fairly good shape. There's very little minor deterioration on it. And typically they uh, deteriorate at, at uh, six, seven, or eight, nine years. So you're doing good here. There's some uh, tree limbs on the uh, roof itself in the front of the house. Uh, you have a bougainvillea uh, bush growing on the surface uh, over the um, uh, kitchen area you have uh, more bougainvillea and your service cable, electrical service cable goes up through a tree, a lemon tree and the uh, power company will cut that back. Uh, it's, it's their dime. It's their wire and they maintain the wire. But they need to be notified on that. Uh, I'm going to swing the camera around so you'll get a view of your roof here. You see the whirly bird uh, vents and gutters uh, in the back and partial gutters in front and you have a newer uh, vent pipe for your furnace and another whirlybird uh, over your uh, bedrooms. Again this is Greg Noyes of Pacific West Home Inspections and I could be reached at 818-271-1000 and also on the web, that's www.ehomeinspector.com.